Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 27. In this tutorial we are going to experiment a little bit with getting our NPC to kind of run away whenever we pull out a gun around them. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series and indeed everything else on game development on my channel and if you've enjoyed this series so far please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll get things like free uh, project files, uh, early access to many of these tutorials, exclusive content and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So between the last tutorial and this tutorial, you may have noticed uh, the change in the uh, Unity engine. So I've upgraded to 2019.3 at this point, and this is the version which kind of changed things visually within Unity, but everything is fundamentally the same. So. How do we get our NPC, let's start with Malcolm here, how do we get him to kind of run away and start panicking if we, you know, pull out a gun right next to him? Well, that's what we're going to experiment with here. And there's tons of different ways that you can do a lot of this. You could do something with Raycast if you wanted to, but I like being creative and I like to keep things somewhat consistent, i.e. whatever we do here and apply to Malcolm, we'll be able to apply to any NPC whether they're in the game right now or not quickly and easily. So the way we're going to do it is we are going to basically pull out, um, think of it as like a trigger around our player whenever we pull out a gun. And if the NPC is within that trigger range, then they will recognize that we have pulled out a gun and they will do whatever they need to after that. So in order to do that, we need to go to our contract killer, make sure we go to the right one, not the fake one from the cutscene. And let's go to a 3D object and let's add in a cylinder. So the cylinder isn't going to be visible right now, so let's probably turn on our player and we can see. So there's a couple of things we need to do to this cylinder to actually make it a bit more relevant to what we're doing here. Firstly, let's rename it. Uh, so let's rename and let's have uh, aiming, um, what should we call it? Something relevant. Come on, Jimmy, think of a name aiming uh, <laughs> distance so this is going to be the distance around our player which we can use so let's get it to a reasonable size let's try uh, 6 by 0 0.1 by 6 so it's quite a wide range around our player and it might be wise to kind of bring it forward a bit because you know what we're aiming in front People behind us may not necessarily see it quite so much, only if they're closer. So it might be wise to bring that out just a little bit to about there. So our range for an NPC to determine that we have a gun is around there. Obviously, you can change that however you want it to be bigger, smaller. It's up to you. Uh, next thing we need to do is let's bring it up a little bit so we can see. There we go. And let's get rid of the capsule collider that is attached to it because we don't need it. We need a mesh collider. So let's go to add component, type in col, short for collider, and let's click on mesh collider. Then let's tick on convex and is trigger. And now we can see that the collider for all of this is perfect. It's exactly what we need. And the fact we've ticked is trigger, I'm hoping you guys may have realized what we're gonna be doing here. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the mesh renderer on for this because we're going to do one test to make sure that this appears when we need it to and then we're going to complete the sequence of getting our npc to run away so let's turn off the aiming distance object there and next thing we need to do is actually activate it whenever we've picked up a gun so i'm going to turn our actual player back off so we can run the scene through as normal and we need to go to our gun which is right there and on there, we have the gun pickup trigger. So let's go into gun pickup. So in here, we just need to add in uh, an extra variable. Uh, oh, it's not that one actually, is it? Now I think about it, because we've already, yes, of course, we've already added the ability to uh, pick up the gun. Haven't we? We've done that a couple of tutorials ago. It's actually the firing pistol control that we need, isn't it? Yeah, that's my fault. That is my fault because, like I say, we've already got our gun in place. So now we're firing our pistol. So we've got to the point where we do aim it. 
All we need to do is add in an extra bit of code which allows us to bring up that aiming distance object. So let's add in a game object. Public game object aiming object. And what that means is that down here where we've got is aiming is true and is firing is false. It says we're aiming our pistol animation. At that point, we can say aiming object dot set active true. And obviously we have to do the inverse of that, which is in the else statement there. So after we've set is aiming to false, we then need to say aiming object dot set active also false. Thank you, Unity, for autofilling that. I didn't want you to, but never mind. And let's save that script. So the last thing we're going to do here on this section before we test it is add in that aiming distance object to this over here. So drag and drop. And I didn't want to do it. There we go. Drag and drop. And I'm going to save my scene. And now let's press play. So hopefully what should happen here is that we'll go and we'll go pick up our gun and when we've done it we'll try aiming and that uh, di aiming distance object should appear and when we stop aiming it should disappear let's go test this out we have our gun so let's aim oops it does help if i actually move the mouse in the right place i, think I forgot i actually had it still over the play button that's my fault so yeah this, I'm confident this will work now anyway. So the idea is, once we get it to appear, whenever an NPC enters that trigger, that's where we have uh, some fun with them, and they run away. So let's test this again. Uh, picked up our weapon, and there we go. You can see that um, the <laughs> post-processing is affecting it, but that's uh, irrelevant at this point. It does exactly what we need it to. So let's turn off that mesh renderer. We know that's going to work, no problem. So the next thing we need to do is we need to attach a script to it to say if an NPC enters this, what is that NPC going to do? So what I intend to do here is basically adjust their animation and adjust their speed. So let's right click, create C sharp script. And we are still in the characters folder here down there, so that's fine. And we'll call this, um, what can we call it? NPC alerted. So let's open this script up. And in here, what we need to do is get rid of start and update because we don't need them. What we do need is an on trigger enter method. So void on trigger enter doesn't need to be private. Uh, we do need this in here, the collider, although you can change other to anything at all if you want to. You can change it to something like NPC or RNPC or keep it as other. It's entirely up to you. Um, I think I'm going to change it to... I'm just going to call it NPC. Why not? So what we need to do is, do you remember a couple of tutorials ago, we set a tag on NPCs? called NPC. And there was a reason for that, for their AI, for when, like, for example, Malcolm walks around the block. His tag is referenced in his AI. We need to do the same thing again here. We need to make sure that whatever is entering this particular trigger is an NPC because we don't want anything else to be affected by our distance object. So we need to say if, and in brackets, NPC dot tag, equals NPC, then we do the following. And remember, if you've changed it up here, uh, if you kept it as other, make sure you do reference it here. So if you changed it to, I don't know, computer man, then make sure it says computer man dot tag. If you've kept it as other, make sure it says other dot tag right there. So we are now going to only make this code work if it's an NPC that has triggered this particular object and what we need to do is say npc dot get component in spiky brackets animator open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the running animation name and i do believe it is just called running so let's go to our animator and check it is indeed running so we will place that here 
semicolon. So the next thing to do is change the speed at which our NPC is moving. Now, if we go to Malcolm and have a look at his nav mesh agent, his speed is currently 2.5. Now, obviously, if he's running, that speed is going to increase. So if we don't change that speed, he's going to do the running animation, but still at a walking distance, which may look a little bit odd. So we need to have a little bit of code to reference this. So we can say uh, npc dot get component. Now we need to reference the nav mesh here. So at the top, we need to add in using unity engine dot ai semicolon, and then within the spiky brackets down here, nav mesh agent, and um, mm -mm. we need to change the speed, don't we? So, oops, dot speed equals, uh, it says 2.5, isn't it? So if we double it and say five, so five semicolon and save. So all we've done there is when this is triggered, that will change from 2.5 to five. So it'll basically double. Hopefully it should make the running animation look a little bit better than what it is. So now this is only the basics of what we're trying to achieve here. Um, we're going to test this out now and see what happens. Ideally, what I would like is to simply have um, this in a separate script on our NPC. And essentially what may or may not happen is that this script triggers and then resets itself to bring our normal AI script back. So we'll probably get around to that in the next tutorial, but for now we need to test if this is going to work as intended. So let's drag our script <clears throat> onto our aiming distance object, which is NPC alerted. And we don't need to set any variables here because we haven't strictly set any because when the object enters, it knows it's going to be this because we referenced it here using the NPC and checking if the tag is NPC. So it knows what object to deal with. So now let's press play. <clears throat> and let's go pick up the gun. And then we'll get in front, or rather next to uh, Malcolm. And then we should see all the changes taking place. So strictly speaking, what we're doing here is still working with a little bit of AI. So I'm going to go around the corner here. And wait for Malcolm to, you know, just walk around the corner. And then I'm going to whip out my pistol. Right, Malcolm. There we go. So I'm thinking after that, we should probably increase his speed a little bit more. Let's have his speed as 7.5. Save and retest that. But you can see the mechanics of all that working. Oh, what have we done here? We forgot the F, didn't we? Because it's a float. There we go. And uh, let's try that once more. So yeah, all that's happening here is, it may seem somewhat complicated, but all that's really happening is as soon as that NPC enters the area where we're aiming our pistol, because he thinks, oh, gun, he's going to start running away. And there's so much more we can do with this, because this is only just simple beginnings of how we can actually work around this. Like I say, there's tons of different ways that you can achieve this. I think this is one of the coolest, because it's, it's just fun. I always try and make things fun. So let's uh, wait for Malcolm again and let's get our pistol out and ah! and he's running away. So obviously now Malcolm is going to run infinitely. He's never going to be able to stop. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to take this script here and we're going to modify it a little bit more. So what I intend to do is make it so as when our NPC enters that range because he's seen us with the gun, uh, we need to make him run away for a set amount of time and then uh, reset so he goes back to his normal AI routine. I uh, will probably add in some sound effects as well and probably apply this to our other NPC uh, over here. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.